Hey, what's up, Camp Renovate? Welcome back to our Christmas series. I'm Jackie T, and I'm so excited you came back to hang out with us. Now today, we are in week two, hearing all about the story of Jesus. Now, our virtue this month is Christmas means celebrating Jesus, God's greatest gift. Say that with me on the count of three. One, two, three. Christmas means celebrating Jesus, God's greatest gift. Good job. Now, before we get into our Bible story today, I want us to stand up to our feet and sing our song, Jingle Jam. Here we go. Good job, everybody. Now, I want to know what your favorite thing to do around Christmas time is. Maybe making cookies or hanging lights or going to see lights. Ready? Shout it out on the count of three. One, two, three. Whoa, those are some really cool things. Did someone say sledding? I love to go see Christmas lights in different neighborhoods and you see all the houses with the lights. Now it's time to go over our Bible verse. It comes from John 3.16 and it says, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son and anyone who believes in him will not die but have eternal life. Good job. Now let's say it all together, but this time let's say it super, super slow. Okay, ready? One, two, three. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. Anyone who believes in him will not die, but have eternal life. Good job.
The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Luke, chapter 1. Verses 26 through 56. Mary of Nazareth was ordinary. True story. An ordinary young woman with an ordinary name, engaged to an ordinary carpenter named Joseph. She lived in an ordinary small town, far from any city that really mattered. In fact, years later, someone would ask, Can anything good come from Nazareth? But even though Mary seemed so very ordinary, her heart was not. She loved and trusted God. Even though her people had been ruled over by the Romans for centuries, Mary believed God's promise that someday he would send a rescuer. Blessed are you, O God, our Lord, King of the universe. But no matter how much Mary loved God, she could never have predicted what would happen one ordinary morning. Dishes cleaned, floor swept, need to fetch water from the well. Mary's morning chores were interrupted by a shimmering flash of light. Oh! A blazing angel stood before her. Its presence seemed to fill the entire room. Mary, the Lord has blessed you in a special way. He is with you. I... I don't understand. Do not be afraid, Mary. God is very pleased with you. God is pleased with me? You will become pregnant and give birth to a son. You must call him Jesus. He will be great, the son of the most high God. The Lord God will make him a king like his father David of long ago. His kingdom will never end. Dozens of questions raced through Mary's mind. How can this happen? I'm not even married yet. The Holy Spirit will make it happen. In fact, your relative Elizabeth is going to have a baby, even though she is old and people thought she could not have children. That's because what God says will always come true. Mary's mind was still reeling, but she knew she could trust God through all of it. I serve the Lord. May it happen to me just as you said it would. The angel left, the room dimmed, Mary sat down to gather her thoughts. A baby? God's son? I've got to see Elizabeth. As quickly as she could, Mary found a group traveling to the hill country of Judea where Elizabeth lived. After long days on the road, Mary reached the home of Elizabeth and Zechariah. Why, it's Mary. Mary hugged her much older relative. Elizabeth. You really are going to have a baby. As Mary spoke, Elizabeth's baby kicked and rolled inside her. Oh, God has blessed you more than other women, and blessed is the child you will have. Why is God so kind to me? Why has the mother of my Lord come to me? How, how did you know? As soon as I heard the sound of your voice, the baby inside me jumped for joy. You are a woman God has blessed. You have believed the Lord would keep his promises to you. Could I stay with you for a while? Of course. It's too quiet around here anyway. Why is that? Zachariah hasn't said a word in more than six months. My goodness. Long story. He met an angel. Gabriel? That's the one. Come in, sit down, have some tea. During the time Mary stayed with Elizabeth, the joy in her heart overflowed. 
My soul gives glory to the Lord. My spirit delights in God, my Savior. He has taken note of me even though I am not considered important. He has always remembered to be kind, just as he promised to our people long ago. Mary was just beginning to see how God's amazing plan would unfold. She stayed with Elizabeth for three months, and then she returned home. What a great story. Now, Mary had no idea what the angel was going to say, and it could have been and it was really scary for her. But you know what? She trusted that God had a plan. So today, we are bottom, so today our bottom line is that we can celebrate because God has a plan. God has a plan for each one of us, you and me. And we can be thankful for that and celebrate. Now before we go, let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for today. We thank you for Mary's trust in you and that we can trust in you too. We thank you for that you always have a plan. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, Camp Renovate, it's been so much fun hanging out with you. I can't wait to see you back for our final week next week. See you later. Bye.